Hello, my name is Jeff Daly. I have the privilege of talking to you today about ahead of time Triton kernel libraries on Rockham. Rockham is uh, AMD's open source collection of drivers, development tools, libraries that enable AMD GPU programming from low level kernels to end user applications like PyTorch. If you'd like to learn more about Rockham, I recommend watching my presentation from the 2022 PyTorch conference. I am representing the efforts of quite a few AMDers today. Uh, the bulk of the effort belongs to Shinya. And since this project also depends on AMD GPU support in Triton, the, uh, there are far more AMDers uh, directly or indirectly represented uh, and involved in this project through Triton as well as our LLVM compiler team. Before we dive into AO Triton, it wouldn't exist if it weren't for scaled dot product attention. It is important to us at AMD as well as to the community that we support that PyTorch's features are both functional and high performing. That said, there are over 20,000 unit tests for the SDPA feature in PyTorch. These tests cover perhaps far more corner cases than you might experience as part of one or two popular models. But having complete test coverage uh, is important for establishing trust and confidence. And if correctness weren't enough, performance is a rapidly moving target. For example, the reference implementation for flash attention is up to version 3 today. All told, this represents a significant effort to get right and to do it quickly. There are a few other related efforts at AMD to provide flash attention. Now, this is because our users are asking for these multiple integration points. AO Triton is complementary to these other uh, integrations. The PyTorch community has already had a few years experience with Triton via Torch Compile, but I do want to remind you of a few things that we also like about it too. AMD GPUs are officially supported upstream in Triton. The Triton talk from yesterday, in fact, featured performance results from MI300. Using Triton allows you to develop the GPU kernels with higher productivity than using CUDA or HIP directly. And there are useful tutorials and examples as part of the Triton source tree that can help you get started today, covering topics such as fused attention. So given this momentum behind Triton, its benefits, the promises behind it, we thought, why don't we set out to use it to develop a flash attention kernel to be used in eager mode PyTorch. So much focus is given to Triton as a just-in-time compiler. There are examples such as flex attention, torch compile, AOT inductor, and so on. Triton is a powerful tool that has shown you can achieve great performance across various kernels that underpin cutting edge models. We want to expand Triton's use case uh, from just a, a just-in-time compiler uh, to be able to, well, be a compiler. We want to use it ahead of time. This has many benefits that we can use it to generate kernel libraries like AO Triton that are similar to HIPBLAS. So it's just a C++ library to execute on our GPUs. We can then use these libraries in PyTorch, LinkedIn, as part of uh, just the, uh, how we deliver PyTorch with eager mode. And we can also use it in other projects as well. <coughs> the point is we are leveraging Triton to rapidly design, implement, test, and benchmark eager mode execution of STPA kernels in PyTorch. Before going into detail about AO Triton, I want to refresh what the attention forward kernel arguments look like with respect to our Triton kernel implementation. The first set of arguments are the kernel arguments you'd be familiar with, such as the QKV buffers and so on. The next set of arguments are the compile time choices that can be used to generate more optimal kernels. Uh, these are the attention variants you might be familiar with. Is dropout enabled? Do we need to return softmax? These are optional features of the kernel. Disabling dropout, for example, can save quite a few registers and produce a very different kernel if you looked at the ISA relative to the other variants. Uh, last are the tuning arguments, some of which would be familiar to any of you developing Triton kernels, uh, such as the block m and sizes. There are a significant number of constants in this kernel, and these aren't just Boolean choices such as the M and N block sizes can have a range of suitable values. Uh, each of these combinations of constant values uh, represents a unique kernel that Triton will generate. Uh, further, a unique kernel is generated 
for each set of input types, so bfloat16, fb16, fb32. And then you also have to consider all of the graphics targets that we support. Uh, MI300, to name one, the Radeon RX 7900 XTX. So all of these combinations of constants and compute targets represent a lot of kernels that will be generated. Traditional GPU kernel development would need to experiment with these uh, optimization settings, different graphics targets, et cetera. With AO Triton, we can automate much of this. All right, so with all that background, uh, let's look at how we leverage Triton to create a C++ shared library for attention kernels. So we start out with a GPU kernel written in Triton. What's not shown here is a companion file uh, that comes with it that describes the GPU kernel. Uh, this file ends up getting parsed by some of the AO Triton scripts that we've developed for code generation. We'll see that in a moment. The file describes the possible input types uh, as well as the tuning arguments for this kernel. Next, we compile every single version of the kernels that can be generated. So we have some scripts to do this. We end up invoking Triton. Now, the Triton you see here on screen, this is the exact same Triton that we all know. Uh, we don't have a fork of it with magic features. We do pin the Triton version because it's useful. Uh, Triton is a moving target uh, upstream. We want to make sure that we're using a version that we're comfortable with and that we've vetted. And so we do pin the version of Triton. Uh, we do actually also strip out uh, anything CUDA related because as part of our CI, CD automation, those tend to download, uh, those downloads fail. So we do simplify it just a little bit uh, just to make our lives a little easier. You can see uh, the arrow is going through the Rockham box uh, on the left. That's because as part of compilation, we are leveraging the AMD uh, Clang uh, tool chain to produce the HSA code object files. These are the files that represent the ISA instructions that get loaded onto uh, the device. Further, we compress these HSA CO files. Um, this is not something that is done normally through uh, the Rockham tool chain. This is something extra we do because of the sheer number of kernels that are generated. When we bundle all those into a, a shared uh, object later, we want to make sure we're taking up as little space as possible. All right, so we have all these kernels. Which ones are the most performant? Okay, so we have a tuning process. Once we've compiled all of the possible kernels, we run through uh, the, the full tuning space that we've uh, set up. This is a manually triggered process. We do it once as part of deployment. So as we're getting ready to do a new release, we'll trigger the tuning database step. Um, we don't use Triton's auto-tuning. You'll see the box is kind of lifted out of Triton. Uh, that's because we do copy uh, that code out of Triton and put it into our tuning script directly. Otherwise, it's the exact same steps that you would see in uh, Triton's auto-tune. Uh, we tune based on the block M and N sizes, as well as the max sequence length Q and K values. And if during the tuning process, a particular kernel is never selected as being optimal, we don't compile it into the final uh, deployed product. All right, next is the dispatcher shim. What you need to know about this is it's how we go from a C++ API that is easy, high level to use, uh, to actually executing a kernel on the GPU. The dispatcher interprets the arguments coming from the C++ API to select the flash variant that we want. So recall, uh, bfloat16 is an input type, uh, is dropout disabled, so we pick the particular variant that we want, and then associated with that variant is a lookup table that contains the optimal uh, selection from the database step we did earlier. Uh, lastly, the dispatcher will decompress the code object that was bundled with the shared library, and then it'll use traditional HIP APIs to load that code object into device memory. And then, of course, there is uh, the launch step, so HIP launch kernel. We don't end up loading all of the kernels from the shared library. We only load the ones that we need to use, and we do it in a lazy fashion. Uh, we only load them one time. To an end user application, all they see is this API facade. So it looks like a C++ library. We present them with that interface. They're just calling it like it's a function call. Um, that really does hide all the complexity. Uh, there is a bit of detail glossed over, obviously, in this talk because it's only a lightning talk. Um, I do hope it's clear uh, that to use Triton to generate eager mode ready kernel libraries is possible, but it does take some care to do correctly. Uh, you can find more details if you go to the source repository. 
Uh, you can look at all the steps there, uh, all the uh, code generation scripts, etc. Um, it is uh, open source, obviously. Um, you can take advantage of the GitHub issues if you want to see additional features. Uh, we did design AO Triton to be extensible, although the focus was on SDPA. Uh, if there are other kernels uh, that the community would like to see uh, supported in eager mode as a callable library that you can post those issues for us, and we'd be happy to develop those. Uh, unfortunately, there are some drawbacks to this approach. Uh, I've said it many times, there are a lot of kernels that can be generated. Uh, we could do this through just-in-time compilation to try and save on the code object sizes, share library sizes, but at that point we basically get flex attention. Um, the uh, the trade-off though is that we can highly tune uh, all of these kernels. Uh, this is not to say flex attention doesn't have good performance, but we believe we can achieve more through AO Triton. So today AO Triton is able to give us full CI coverage uh, in PyTorch. That was the whole reason that we came up with this approach. Uh, CI coverage as well as performance. Uh, this gives us both SDPA coverage and memory efficient uh, tension in PyTorch, eager mode, while also providing high performance kernels. Thank you very much.